Look, man, y'all really got to chill out, like for real. Um, I got to give a shout out to the newest team, Keep It Clean, patrons, before we get started. Uh, that's Raymond L., Benjamin H., Breezy Bree, Gov Kid, TJ H., Sergio, and Alfred. Y'all got to chill out because I feel like y'all are like supporting too much almost. Um, but no, nah, I, I, I appreciate it, man. I really, really do, uh, because y'all are very, very special. Um, and I, I just, I need to make sure that y'all know that. Y'all need to continue to be reminded of that, that y'all are very special. And everything, uh, it means a whole lot, for real. It, it, it means a whole lot, seriously. So thank you all. Um, shout out to all the, the, the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Shout out to everybody that, that has even take the glance uh, at the channel even if you don't watch it regularly if you come stop by once a week or once every two weeks or once a month whatever it is thank you thank you because you are a contributor i appreciate y'all thank you thank y'all for letting this be fun y'all know we we don't take ourselves too seriously on here we have a good time because we're not doing anything crazy we're not doing anything special all we're doing is talking about our opinions on whether it be the ravens or anything else going on in the nfl we talk about our opinions, we talk about expectations, and then we go through the games and see if they're met or not. That's it. It ain't nothing special, it ain't nothing crazy. Uh, but we have a fun time doing it, and y'all are a huge, 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 huge part of that. So thank you. Um, for the patrons, thank y'all for showing extra support. Uh, anybody that would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, again, you don't have to. It ain't no necessity. But if you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. And if you don't, Hey, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Now, uh, we got some questions from a lot of different patrons. Uh, one of the newest ones is Benjamin H. Oh, not even a question. He said, um, uh, keep up the good work. Appreciate your hard work. Thank you, Benjamin. I appreciate that. Thank you. For real. Um, appreciate that, man. Thank you. Uh, next one came from Pablo, another patron. He said, uh, what's up, Engraven? Keep doing what you do, bro. We all love the content. Well, not everybody, but thank you. He said, uh, one question I have is, what are your thoughts on marijuana in the game of football? Uh, we're starting to see a lot of retired players and even some current ones saying they smoke and are advocates for marijuana. This might be a touchy question, depending on where you live, but I'd like to know your thoughts. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not a marijuana smoker, so I don't care for it. So I don't really have any, like, thoughts on it or anything like that. Um, yeah, that... Yeah, that, that's it. I don't care for it. I don't smoke it, so I don't like have anything to say when it comes to the uh, the NFL and their policies and procedures when it comes to uh, marijuana in the league. Well, that was certainly a interesting way to start things off. Uh, next question came from another new patron, my guy TJ. Uh, he said, "God bless you for the videos, brother. Love to the family. Appreciate that, TJ." Uh, he said, "Lamar Jackson is the Kobe Bryant of the NFL. Just look back at how they criticized and hated him, but Kobe didn't care. He just perfected his craft and won rings. Watch Lamar do the same. He has that Kobe swag and mindset. That's our quarterback, and I believe in him. And he will be a multiple, multiple Super Bowl winner." Uh, God got him. Sorry for the paragraph, but I'm tired of them talking down on Lamar. He's a great God-given quarterback who will prove everybody wrong for many years to come. God bless. Team, keep it clean. Hey, that's what we all hoping for, um, because that would be a, a great way to really um, show everybody like, hey, he did it. He did it. And then like you, you talked about, you said he's going to win multiple Super Bowls. So it would be like, all right, he did it, and then he did it again. Next question came from my guy Sergio, a new patron. Appreciate you. Uh, he said, hey, engraving, quality or quantity? Hope all is well with you and the fam. After watching the past few videos about the wide receivers, it got me thinking. Could the reason for us not having a star receiver be the lack of quality reps? That's certainly a part of it. That, that is certainly a part of it because uh, the Ravens' volume in the passing game uh, is very low. Um, and again, the emphasis they put on receivers is, is, is very low compared to everybody else in the league. So, yeah, that's a huge part of it. But anyway, he said the offense being run heavy means there are less reps in training camp and practice for the wide receivers. And their route concepts have always been simple and predictable. There seems to be a lack of both quantity and 
quality reps. In baseball, the more at-bats a player has, the better their vision gets and the more hits they accumulate. In basketball, the more shots a player has, the more efficient they become. Even in music, the more reps you get as a band, the better over the overall sound. I, I love these analogies and comparisons. Thank you for that because it makes your point stick out that much more and it appeals to so many different audiences who can relate to all these different things. So thank you for that. He said the difference between Odell in Cleveland versus Odell in LA is night and day. Oh, man. Uh, don't get me wrong. I love how we run through teams in the regular season. However, one of the best rushing teams in the league, Cleveland, uh, was sitting at home watching two passing teams play in the Super Bowl. Could the solution for developing good receivers be getting them more quality reps? For sure. For sure. And, hey, this, this could be where one of our guys ends up blossoming. This could be where one of the Ravens guys that they have on the roster right now, they end up really showing out. But they, they got to get the opportunity to do it. And with what you suggested... They very well could get that. Now, it's, it's all up to the Ravens now. Next question came from my guy, Nick Brick. I appreciate you being a patron. It's been a little minute. I ain't heard from you in a little minute. Uh, you said, Engraving, it's been a minute since I asked the question, but I'll make this quick. With the Flacco versus the Ravens matchup coming, I've been watching some clips from Jets practice with Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson, CJ Uzama, and Corey Davis. Is this the best set of weapons Flacco has ever had? And does this make you worried for week one? Oh, I like that question. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, it. I mean, you, he had Anquan Bolden. He, he had Anquan Bolden, Torrey Smith, and they complemented each other so perfectly. Then Jacoby Jones, too. Uh, Dennis Pitta and Ed Dixon. Um, Ray Rice and uh, Bernard Pierce. He was cool. Ray Rice, though. He had Ray Rice. Um, so, yeah. Ah, uh, we'll see. It's it's to be determined. Right now, I can't say. I mean. Like that 2012, that Super Bowl squad, they were they were something. Um, but I mean, we'll we'll see with these young guys that he has right now. Uh, we'll see what they can do. Uh, we'll see how talented they are, and definitely week one, we'll, we'll see it. Um, does that make me worry for week one? Um, well, yeah. I mean, it's week one. Everybody has a shot. Everybody is is a fresh season. Everybody's starting off the same zero and zero. So yeah, there should be cause for concern. Um, and I just I don't want the Ravens to come out slow. I don't want them to come out uh, just yeah. I don't want them to come out slow. I, I just hope this season. And I don't care if it's the Jets. And I don't, I wouldn't even care if anybody said, oh well, it's just the Jets. It doesn't matter. No, it matters. I don't want. I wouldn't want the Ravens to. I would want the Ravens to come out firing, like putting up a bunch of points and putting that pressure on the Jets right away, um, because that can really get the season going the right way. That can put you in that mind frame and that mindset like, all right, we on it now. So it, it starts in New York. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Next question came from another new patron, but a long time subscriber, uh, AW Juice Man. He said, I finally became a patron. LOL. I have to show my brother some love and support for the channel. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, I truly appreciate you, man. With that being said, what would it take for the Ravens to. <laughs> hey, I love how you think, though, so I ain't mad at this at all. What would it take for the Ravens to call the Vikings and make a trade for Justin Jefferson after this season, obviously? Oh, man. Oof. Justin Jefferson. Oh, that would be filthy. Filthy. Um, but Vi Vikings ain't letting him go nowhere. He he is not going. They, they'll get rid of Adam Thielen. They ain't get rid of no, no judge. Well, you know what? Actually, Chiefs got rid of Tyreek Hill. Packers got rid of Devontae Adams. So I can never say never. But I just, I don't think it's happening. I, I, I just don't. But he, he would be nice. I mean, he already used to wearing purple anyway. But I just don't think it's, it, it would happen. Um, he said he would be a great fit here. His vibe and swagger. Uh, and can you imagine him, Lamar Jackson, Manjus, Bateman, all doing, a, all doing a gritty dance after every touchdown? Especially when we play them Bengals, too. Uh, speaking of which, him and Chase have sparked up a rivalry on who's better between the two. Yeah. Hey, two really, really good receivers. Two really, really good receivers. Going, hey, I mean, they, no, I ain't got no problem with it. Let them go back and forth and compete. Hey, who's better? Uh, no problem with that at all. 
Uh, he said, imagine how that will feel to Jamar Chase and their Macaulay Culkin from home looking QB, LOL. Uh, if Jefferson came to the Ravens and let's say Giro is gone and Keith Williams became our offensive coordinator, LOL. He said, I know, my brother, I wrote a lot, but you caught in the wife and all your family as well as hers and your dog. Uh, have a beautiful and blessed day, man. Thank you so much. Hey, I appreciate it. That would that would definitely be something. That would be uh that would be a lot of fun. Uh just even based off of just the vibe alone, man. Um it probably won't ever happen, but it will be a lot of fun and it'll be fun fun to think about too. You are the GOAT. Uh well if this is talking about me, you probably talking about like goofiest of all time or something. But anyway, this next question came from my guy Evan. I uh, said, Hey Graven, I recently found your channel in the past month and I gotta say your attention to the team, your channel. And your takes are top tier. Uh, I wish I could subscribe to your Patreon, but I don't really have the extra funds. That's okay. That that don't don't worry about it. That, that is perfectly fine. He said, however, I'm always looking at your YouTube channel, looking for more content that isn't generated or scripted by a major company. <laughs> hey, people gotta they gotta collect the check. But anyway, he said, actually watching your franchise tag video now at work. You are real when you're appreciated, and you are dope, sir. It's very hard to find. Unbiased and honest content from one diehard football fan to another. I commend you and always will be looking for updates. Thank you for your content and go flock. Thank you, Evan. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Um, thank you for, for, for checking out the channel. Um, and that's something that, um, that, that's important to me. Uh, and not only for me, but for, for other people, too, um, that watch the channel. It, it's important for me to... Uh, I love that this is our thing and we can give our honest opinion about whatever. Uh, I know if like for, for people who are employed by a team in the NFL, they can't give their honest opinion. And if they do give their honest opinion, then they would risk, they would run the risk of being fired. Um, and I mean, that's, that's business. That's, uh, I'm like, what NFL team would want you talking openly and honestly about them? I mean, in my opinion, I feel like that would actually make them better and, and, and make people appreciate that that much more. Because if they would allow like straight up honesty like that, I, ooh, I, I think that would be great. But we know that's not the case. Um, but I just I, I appreciate that we have an opportunity to do that, to speak honestly about really whatever, whether it's the Ravens or not, whatever it may be. And then uh, things like this, like with questions from y'all, um, it allows you all to share your honest opinions about the team or whatever the goings on are in the NFL. And it allows you, cause again, what I, what I hate is, um, I, I just, I'm not a fan of gatekeeping. I'm not a fan of gatekeeping at all. It, it is just something that just drives me crazy. But, and I know like a lot of people, um, they may be sort of scared to, to voice their opinions, whether it be on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, wherever, because stuff can get so toxic so fast. Social media can get so toxic so fast. If you say something that somebody may not agree with or they may not have been thinking about, then they get to name calling and disrespecting and this and that. And it's just that was one of my biggest reasons for starting questions from subscribers was to allow people to get whatever their opinion or question or thoughts out. To, allowing them to get that out so they could share it with other people and hey some people may agree with it some people may not but for them to have a, a safe space to share whatever they're thinking and for people to give their opinions on whatever it is respectfully because a lot of places are not like that you go put something that a lot of people may not be thinking in facebook oh it's, it's disgusting twitter oh man it, it could be even worse people get nasty people get personal it's like for what what's the what's the point what does that do for anybody? Getting personal over a, different, a difference of opinion? It's, it's just not worth it, man. But I, I appreciate that. Um, he said, also, I am praying that we get Lamar Jackson a contract before we meet the, the Flacco-led Jets. And that Shamar Bridges continues his groove and makes the final roster. Bleed black and purple, nine the great. Hey, appreciate that. Hey, um, hope so. I mean, time is ticking. Time is a ticking. Uh, today is August 21st, um, and there is not a contract yet. So first game is September 11th or 4th. I forget when, but anyway, I, I think it's the 11th. Um, yeah, it's the 11th. So they got time. 
but it's just up to them to make sure they use it efficiently. What gives? Next question came from my boy, Mark JG. He said, what's good, Engraven? Hope all is well. I was listening to your Friday uploads on Steve Young and RG3, and it really has me thinking, which will give first, Lamar or the philosophy? Oof. Now, that, that's a question right there. That's, ooh, that's a cool, that's a question. Let's, let's, let's see the rest. I don't like the Lamar topic, LOL, but I have love and respect for Lamar as a Raven and as a humble guy. Smash mouth football and good defense is great, but I'd rather have a top 10 offense as a whole than a top three rushing offense with nothing, with nothing to show for it. Uh, I hope we open up the offense more so our receivers can eat and maybe we can better evaluate talent. It's getting better uh, to see the type of pass catches Lamar needs at his disposal. Because, Lord, I'm not trying to open up the doors for Lamar to walk because he will get paid no matter what. He will. He will. But back to what you were saying, um, I hope we open up the offense more so our receivers can eat and maybe we can better evaluate talent. I agree with that a lot. Um Something that we've said on here, too, when it comes to Ravens receivers, there have been so many receivers that have came and walked through the Ravens doors and walked out. And we never got to really see how good or how bad they were. It was just so much unknown because they didn't get an opportunity. They didn't get playing time. They didn't get reps. They didn't get passes thrown their way. They didn't get catches. They weren't on the field like that. It has been so many that we just we don't know. And that's, that's, that's frustrating, and it's, it's got to be frustrating for them as players. Because it's like, man, I get drafted to a team or I get signed as an undrafted free agent to a team, and boom, a year goes by, ah, I got a couple pass though. Another year goes by, ah, yeah, I got a couple pass though. Another year goes by, mm, you could be cut, or maybe just inactive, and we never really got to see how good or bad the player was. It's just a question mark, and then they're gone. And again, most Ravens receivers' careers, they don't usually make it after the Ravens. They usually don't. Hollywood Brown, he's obviously doing his thing with the Cardinals, uh, but he got traded. Torrey Smith, he made it. Uh, he even got a second Super Bowl with the Eagles, and he went to the Panthers and the 49ers. 49ers first, though. Um, Anquan Bolden, he, well, they traded him. He didn't even, his contract didn't run out. Um, but yeah, usually most guys, when their contract runs out, usually that's it. Usually that's it. Usually that's a wrap. Uh, if, if they got drafted by the Ravens and then their contract runs out, usually that's it. Most of the time, like nine times out of ten. Mark, Mark Clayton was another one. He went to the Rams and he's doing his thing, but the injuries just, he had like knee injuries and that just killed his career quick. Um, so hopefully, like moving forward with the guys that the Ravens have right now, since that's who it's going to be. All right, that's who it's going to be. Cool. Bateman, Prochet, Duvernay, uh, Wallace, who well, hopefully he not hurt for the year. Whether well, it's Bridges or Polk, Demarcus Robinson now. I, I just hope that the Ravens can maximize these guys. And, and, and so we can, we can properly evaluate them. And we can truly know just how good they can really be. We can see them use their full potential. Um, he also said, uh, real quick too, some receiver scenarios came to mind. DJ Moore needs a consistent quarterback, and we have that. Plus, he has the ability to be that guy, although Carolina may not bite. They just signed him to a contract extension either this off or maybe last off. I think it was last offseason. But I don't think he's going anywhere. He said, I throw a second and a fifth with, with Duvernay and Boyle for more in the third round pick. Yeah, I, I don't think he's going. I think he signed a contract extension recently. He said, I didn't know Michael Thomas was last year. Uh, I didn't really pay attention that he had an ankle injury. Yeah, he didn't play like... I don't think he played at all last year. I don't think. And even the year before that, he was dealing with injuries too. He said, I would offer up a second or third round pick for Michael Thomas because I feel his value dropping. Yeah, they just drafted Chris Salave. Um, hey, I, I would try that third, see if they bite. What's the worst they could have, that could happen? They would say no. Okay. Hey, we, we offer some. And then, hey, if they, if they gave like a definite no, then we okay. Throw up a second. Okay. Throw, throw a second round pick. But you have to check out their medicals, though, because you don't want to be like bringing on somebody that's still hurt or that's like super high risk to be hurt because uh, that little injury prone label is not on Michael Thomas yet. Well, for some people, it might be, but it's, it's like he's getting very close to having that. So hopefully he'll be healthy this year. Uh, he said maybe LaVisca Chenault. Uh, how do you feel and what would you want to do we just signed the Marcus, but i want lamar's job easier i'm sending this late so if it sounds a bit off i do apologize sorry for the rain <laughs> peace and blessings now nah, it's all good man um 
Wow. A lot of the options that I wanted uh, are uh, over with now. Um, well, the biggest one being a, a DK Metcalf, but uh, like it's it's limited stuff out there. there there's Robbie Anderson. That's one. Um, is he a needle mover? He would help. He would help. He's from Florida too, so that that, that makes it even better. Um, mm, I don't know. I, I I really don't know. It's. It's just really um since it's not it's not much out there right now. Um I don't know, everybody keep talking about Odell Beckham Jr. And Odell Beckham Jr. is nice, but you ain't get nothing from him till later down the road. Um but I mean that can help in the playoffs, especially that experience. But Demarcus Robinson, he also got playoff experience and Super Bowl experience. Um but I um what I want what I would say would just really to like it got talked about in the previous question. But the guys that the Ravens have on the squad right now, use them. Really use them. Give them chances. Hey, if they have a drop, okay, don't, don't take them out of the game and don't make them inactive for the next four games just because they have one drop. No. Give them, give them an opportunity then. Let, let them show who they are. Let them show themselves. And may the best men win as starting receivers and slot receivers and Backups and what 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 whatever and whatnot, but I, I just they're not gonna make it any crazy trade for anybody, anything like that. It's not really anybody to bring in. All right, so cool. Let's really see what these guys got. Like really see. Let's consistently give them opportunities. Let's consistently like really put them in a good position. Let them show you why you drafted them. Let them show you what they specialized in. Let them show you what makes each and every one of them stand out from the next. Next question came from my guy, Gold Murano. He said, pundits, keep talking. Engraven, I can't help bothering you today. Now, Emmanuel Acho and Rick uh, Boucher say that Greg, I don't know who that is, say that Greg Roman should be fired uh, on Speak for Yourself. Well, I mean, again, it, it, Greg Roman could be fired tomorrow, but it, it wouldn't really change much. It would just change the name of the offensive coordinator, but it would still be the same philosophy. Um, but he said, and Aaron Rodgers is asking Green Bay to go sign Antonio Brown. Oh, he did? I ain't hear about that one. That would be something. He said, why can't Lamar just get one Pro Bowl wide receiver? Why do all the other quarterbacks get spoiled with all the riches? Hey, that's, um, I mean, that's, that's the Ravens. But now, uh, with that being said, let's try to make their own Pro Bowl wide receiver. Um, let, let's hope that the Ravens, again, they really give their guys a shot at, at being Pro Bowl wide receivers. Not Pro Bowl returners. Not Pro Bowl special teamers. Not pro, no, Pro Bowl wide receivers, because that would really uh, be a huge step uh, in the right direction. Baltimore Ravens team game plan. Next question came from my boy Kevin S. He said, Hey, Raven, uh, no one is talking about what the Ravens are doing on the low. With the recent signing of Demarcus Robinson, the Ravens are building a full football team that has one or two low weaknesses on offense and defense. Positions 9 to 10 on both sides of the ball are very good to great. Most teams are top heavy with quarterback and wide receiver, then weak in four to five areas on both sides of the ball. All right, let's see what he's talking about. He said, For Ravens offense, the QB is great. The wide receivers are good enough. We'll see. It's to be determined. Um, and again, we, we just want them to, since they're going to roll with who they have, cool. We just want them to be given a fair, legitimate shot to show who they are. I, I, I just, I wouldn't want that there to still be all these question marks. Who is Rashad Bateman? Who is James Prochet? Who is Devin DuVernay? Who is Shamar Bridges? I don't want the Ravens to go through this season and we still questioning like what the Ravens receivers can or cannot do. We should have answers this season. If they're going to roll with who they got, we need to have answers. Anyway, he said running backs, very good. Oh, very hurt too, but they're pretty good. Tight ends, great. Uh, offensive line, very good. Um, I would say the offensive line could be good. I wouldn't say very good right now because Ronnie Stanley is injured. Linderbaum, he's Hasn't returned to practice yet, I don't believe. Um, and we still got to see him in an in, in 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 NFL game. I haven't seen him yet. Um, so I would say they can be good. Um, but I, it's, it's still to be determined. But potential is there. As far as Ravens defense, defensive line, great. Uh, ooh, rush, very good. Could be great with the return of a job. So pass rush he's talking about. We'll see. I think a lot with that depends on scheme. Uh, linebackers, very good. Could be great. 
Whoa, hold up now. Linebacker's very good. Could be great. I don't know. Um, Patrick Queen, I think, is still finding his way. He's not bad, but he's not great yet. Um, I think he's still finding his way. If if he can do what he started doing toward the end of last year and just be a wrap-up tackler, then his he's taking off. It wouldn't be no question in my mind that he was taking off. Um, Josh Bynes, he's on the back end of his career. I wouldn't call him great. He's not bad, but I wouldn't call him great. Um, who else we got at linebacker? Malik Harrison. Uh, he's still trying to find his way. Um, yeah, so I, 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 w I wouldn't say the linebackers are great. Secondary, uh, he said great. Well, yeah, secondary, they, they loaded there. Uh, they are building a full football team. Are you noticing that? Thank you and blessings and great health to you and your family. Hey, appreciate you, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. I um, They did this last year, too. Last year, they, they did a, a, a great job of um, having good starters and quality depth on the roster. And they did it again this year. And they did have a couple spots where they were a little weak at, a little thin. Um, but overall, for, for the most part, like you said, um, like uh, not, positions 9 to 10 on both sides. Um, or did you mean 9 out of 10? Uh, but either way, most of the positions are they have quality starters and quality depth. Um, so, yeah, they did it last year. But, of course, last year, all the injuries, and that messed up everything. But this year, they're doing a lot of same stuff. So that's a good sign. To prove a point, next question came from my guy, Manuel. He said, what's up, Engraven? Shout out from Mexico. I was on a Twitter space today, and man, oh, man, Matt said that the 2012 Ravens were running the ball similar to the 2000 Ravens. I went and checked the stats of both Ravens Super Bowls, and oh, my, look what I found. 2000 Ravens had 3,100 passing yards and 2,200 rushing yards. 2012 Ravens had uh, 4,000 passing yards and 1,900 rushing yards. Um, the Ravens think they can run their way to the Super Bowl well. To prove a point once and for all, here are the total yards of each of the last three Super Bowl winners. 2019 Chiefs passing yards were 4,500. Rushing yards were uh, about 1,500. 2020 Tampa Bay, Gron Tampa Bay Gronconeers. Uh, passing yards were 4,600. Rushing yards were 1,500. 2021 LA Rams passing yards were 4,600. Rushing yards were a little less than 1,700. So tell me, EDC, Hobbs, Giro, you expect to win with only rushing, or are you banking up the stats of 2019? Although impressively balanced on the sheet, but very ineffective against situational football and talent wise on the outside with wide receivers. 2019 Ravens passing yards, um, 3,225. Rushing yards, 3,296. Wow, that's what it was? Well, that's crazy. Wow, they, they ran for that many yards? I know they ran a lot, but whoa. They, you sure? That many yards? Wow. Although they want to replicate the stats of 2019 to call it a great year, it ain't great if you don't win the big, you don't win it, win it big. Despite the numbers and Bishotti, uh, should it, should it better than anyone else because Lamar wants those rings? Oh, I think he meant should know it better than anyone else. Because Lamar wants those rings. Not the stats, the rings. Stay safe and tell team people clean to check on each other once in a while. That's true. And yeah, I mean, it's not, it's obviously not just about the numbers. Um, but it's just, because numbers don't always tell the whole story. They do tell a lot of it, but they don't tell the whole story. But it's just volume is a big part of it. Just consistency and um, just really effort. Just really put an effort uh, into that passing game too. Um, you want options. It's nice when you have options for what you are getting ready to do. You don't want to be uh, stuck to, all right, we're good at that and that's what we're good at. We're going to only do that. But, hey, what happens when that doesn't work? What happens when people stop that? You got to be good at something else too. So that's it. Be able to be good at something else too. And the Ravens, they, they can do it. They got the capability to do it. They got the ability to do it. They just got to do it. And last question on this episode came from my guy, Rodell. He said reverse card. Good morning or afternoon, my guy. Can't believe we signed Demarcus Robinson. Nothing against him personally, but if you are a Ravens fan, you know what I mean. <laughs> so today, let's reverse feel like literally. How would you feel if we had our current team with Devontae Adams and Debo Samuel as wide receiver one and two, but... We sacrifice at cornerback. Yes, the Ravens love defense, but in this episode of Dreaming with Subscribers, we are losing our all pro talents in Marlo and Marcus. Oh, so we, okay, we losing both of them. But adding all pro talent with Adams and Debo. 
Lamar would finally have more than enough. But let's say our corners, one and two, are Kyle Fuller and Pepe uh, or Jalen Lamar Davis. How would you feel and would you be happy? Well, as far as the receivers, yes. I, you, you know I, I would be jumping for joy. I would be crazy happy. And now are we talking about just those guys? And Well, I guess I, I just focus on those guys because I don't know if you meant those guys in addition to what we have now or those guys and then some other people. But it's, It sounds like more just those guys and then some other people, not in addition to what we have now. But anyway, um, if that were to happen, uh, I, I would love it for the offense and for the defense. It would not be the end of the world. It wouldn't be the end of the world. Uh, who knows what uh, Pepe Williams can do? Hey, who, who knows? Who knows what Jalen Lamar Davis could do? They can come in and they can shine. They can come in and do their thing. Or they can come in and struggle. Or they can come in and struggle and then eventually start doing their thing. Um, but I, I, I think that if Ravens, they had those guys, we said Debo and, um, and Devontae Adams, that would give them some elite talent at wide receiver. Um, and again, ho hopefully some of the guys that they got right now can show that they can be elite talent. Um, so they can, hopefully they can grow into that. But that, yeah, that would certainly make Lamar Jackson's job easier. But at the same time, it would also make the defense's job easier because you have this elite talent, so you have more options. And you, with you having more options, you have more opportunities. With you having more opportunities, you could have more touchdowns. You having more touchdowns, that allows the defense to have more rest and more opportunity and, and less pressure, really less pressure. Not even necessarily more rest because if you're scoring, defense got to come out there and they got to make a stop. But it could allow them uh, to have less pressure because if you're racking up a bunch of points, 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 then the defense, it makes their job easier. As long as they get a couple stops in between while you're always getting all them points, then the score runs up and the other team got to play catch up so that it can make them one dimensional. Um, also, back to the offense, it would also like say, for instance, hey, Devontae Adams having an off game. Oh, okay, we got Debo. Debo having an off game. Oh, okay, we got Devontae. And even Mark, both of them having an off game. Hey, we got Mark Andrews. Like that, it would give them options. Give them options. So it would just make life a, a whole lot easier for the Ravens. Yeah, this feels like a dream.